Hey, hey, thank you for checking out the Producer Dojo YouTube. Uh, we just started it not too long ago. Uh, it is small, but it is growing very fast. And we are really excited to see something so fruitful and watch this community come together in new ways, in new places here on YouTube. All of your comments and uh, encouragement are very appreciated by everyone uh, not just myself but everyone else who works at the dojo we love hearing what you have to say we love seeing that you share the videos and comment and stuff it makes us really stoked so stoked in fact that we're going to be bringing more of the delicious juicy mind-watering content from behind the producer dojo paywall to you on youtube for free because y'all have been so cool so give yourself a hand and a pat on the back because you did this. You made it worth it by supporting the dojo. So um, now today we have a weekly download that many have rated as their number one of all 300 weekly downloads. This is the one they said that took them over the edge. This was the tipping point. This was what made them get their act together, get their workflow tight, get their sound design all crazy. And that is Mud Pies. So um, this was behind the paywall for the longest time. This is a subject I care very much about. And that's why when Ableton asked me for a one thing to recommend in my Ableton official one thing video, I recommended the idea of mud pies and, uh, you know, using chaos, harnessing the power of chaos and modern recording technology to achieve wild, erratic modulations and sound design possibilities that would previously blench your imagination if you even contemplated them for a second. Yes, mud pies. It's a secret. It's a secret to doing lots of cool stuff. But it's yours now for free. For free because we love you. So, um, yeah, please enjoy this episode. Don't forget to subscribe. Click the little bell. Click share. Comment. All that engagement really helps us with the algorithm. And it helps us to feel better about our life decisions. Especially this decision to take content from the other side of the paywall and put it on the free side for you. All right. Lots of love. Have fun with mud pies. Let's get weird. Well, hey, welcome to the weekly download. We're back. We're back. I'm super, <laughs> super excited for this week because this week we're going to be giving just like the utmost clarity on one of the core ways that I work and that a lot of people work, especially if you are into synthesis and you're into sound design and you want crazy noises in your songs, um, we're going to show you just like pretty much the ultimate hack for making making crazy noises a lot easier and using them a lot easier. I'd like to give some shouts out to uh, Spiderhound for my sick Spiderhound Ooh. shirt. What? Thanks, Spider Hound. Uh, what's up, everybody in the chat? We're really, uh, really stoked to be back here. Um, my day is going great. Thank you very much for asking, Trish. Um, but yeah, what's up? What's up? Really, really stoked. So um, Aaron and I have been working on a new track. He's come here for a, a dojo yeah. visit to do a collab visit. He booked a collab visit and it's gone really, really well. Um, he's going to get my nomination, I think, for the Purple Belt this month because he just crushed Fuck the yeah, prep dude. so hard. He crushed the prep so hard that he made it really easy to work. And we got, we got a great track because he did so much digging and so much sample sourcing. And because he made so many excellent <laughs> mud, mud pies. pies. There's lots of that shit. really, really good mud pies. And they hey, just made it a lot, a lot easier to deal with. So, um, what is a mud pie, right? You may have heard me use these ter this term. It's, um, I only started calling them mud pies this year, but it's kind of started to catch on with a lot of people. Um, Mr. Bill has adopted the mud pies term now. Um, but a lot of people like you, you'll hear people come across this technique cause it's been around for a really, really long time. Uh, but it's, it's a great way to work and it's really overlooked with people who are used to using soft synths. Okay. It's a big weakness for people who are in the box, DAW based producers. 
Okay. But this technique has been around in the hardware world for a long time. And, um, you know, bands kind of bands will do this too. Uh, but basically what a mud pie is, is a long recording where you're not really um, trying to make a recording where you're like playing a part perfectly, you know, like sometimes when you're like, let's say you're, um, you're recording the, uh, the chorus for uh, a, a song with guitars, right? You would probably loop the chorus and just have your guitarist play the exact same fucking riff until they get it perfect, right? This is not that, okay? This is the opposite of that. Making a mud pie is where you're trying to make a long recording that has a ton of variety, in the recording okay it's got to have a lot of chaos and a lot of stuff that's going to sound a little bit ugly overtones uh, and like screeches and yeah all kinds everything. of stuff it's going to have weird awkward terrible parts of the recording because the goal of this recording is to generate the maximum amount of sonic chaos and variety as possible okay and then when you have these long uh you know one minute to five minute long recordings that just have a lot of, uh, oh wait, here, I got to kill Dropbox. Yeah. Just a second. I think it's sinking. Yeah, it's sinking. I, I just killed it. Don't worry. Um, but yeah, so basically, you know, you might, sometimes there's like, there's several different kind of subtypes of mud pies that we're going to, going to get into. But the essence of a mud pie is that you're not really planning on using the whole recording at all. You're planning on using tiny pieces of this recording and either editing it with audio editing in the arrange view or perhaps programming some sampler instruments with it. Uh, both of which are really, really simple to do. And you know, a mud pie is kind of like, like a 128, right? That's where you have a sampler with 128 samples of a given type. So, you know, you need a kick in your, your kick drum spot in your drum kit. Mm -hmm. So if you have a 128 with kicks, you can scroll through a bunch of different kicks and find the kick that you want, right? A mud pie is kind of a similar technique, but it's used for sounds where you want to, there, there to be more to the sound design. You know, you want, you want some, some like smearing effects or like, you know, some kind of like stretching or like crazy distortion or pitch, wild pitch bending or yeah glitchiness or you know something that just makes you go like whoa that sound's been really fucked with yeah. you know when you want that sound right uh it's really annoying and really time consuming to try and make that kind of a sound when you just have a midi part and you're putting effects on it and automating effects and then you got to turn them off to wet to dry when you're not using them yeah. and then automate the wet dry over so you just have a moment where it's like this and then once your moment's created then you got to try and balance all these parameters against each Freeze other to get like and yeah and yeah. it's just like it sucks doing that it takes so long and it's just like it just it, it doesn't sound very musical it just sounds like editing and then you're sitting there listening to this little edit like again and again and again and it's just it's not very musical it's not inspiring it's not fun right yeah. so what a lot of producers like to do uh is that they'll just load up a synth and or you know maybe it's a sound with tons and tons and tons of effects plugins on it where they're just piling the effects on adding stuff deleting stuff adding modulation like just uh, they don't care you know they're just going absolutely wild using your whole processor on like one sound and then just recording the output and then like you, five minutes and then yeah for about five minutes yeah. try not to go like i normally like to keep my mud pies about two minutes mine actually. was so long yeah because long mud pies when you're using yeah. them later there's a lot of ram use like as you load the samples in and let's say you have a drum rack with like 10 mud pies in sampler it. And you like know it's it's shit, using yeah. a lot of ram so yeah. you're gonna want to freeze and flatten that drum rack later so i would say keep them around two minutes or less but um you can always edit them later sometimes like maybe if it's late at night and you're really stoned you yes, might make really you might make some long mud pies <laughs> Honestly, you know? like 15 long it happens <laughs> it happens oh 
<laughs> yeah. So, you know, sometimes in that case, I'll like edit them down a bit, you yeah. know, and create like a greatest hits of your mud pie uh, and then uh, make a shorter one. But, um, you know, you, you, you adapt the technique, see how you like it, see, you know, see what works for you, see what works for your, your set of resources. Uh, but this is a really good technique if you're using machine or an MPC or hardware sense yeah. or whatever. Because the thing is like um, this technique is really popular with hardware musicians because when you're using a piece of hardware, a lot of the time things aren't kind of connecting that reliably, you know, yeah, you can set it up so that Ableton will send bank changes to your synths and stuff, but people don't really do that that much. At least the people that I know where I've gone over to their house and they're like a synth person and they like synths. They're not like, and like when I load up Ableton, you know, I'm not, I'm not sending program changes to all my synths yeah. and stuff. I just kind of like load a patch, jam, record yeah. it and, record and it move on, on. you yeah. know, just record it and move on. Right. So, um, you know, a lot of people use hardware synths just kind of do some variation of this technique people call it like generating material yeah or I never um, do like any midi and for any of the hardware i always like always do audio and then like you're saying chop up your best stuff yeah and then, yeah yeah or like um there, there's another subtype of of um mud pies that i like to call a loop menu um, and that's that's where you're. It's basically like preset shredding, uh, which is a technique that if you're if you're in the dojo, you can check out in the EDM cookbook. There's a recipe that's very specifically about this loop menu technique, um, also known as preset shredding to some people, uh, where basically you have a MIDI loop, and then that loop is going to synth, and you're just changing all the presets, putting effects on them, changing all the presets, right? So you're generating a lot of variety, and that. That preset shredding technique, you you will often do that when you're making mud pies. Like you might um, have a bass sound yeah, and then just be sense, cycling like, through yeah, distortion like, presets, yeah. you know, um, to do it. Guitar so, rig. Every time I watch you use like guitar rig effects and shit on some of the sounds, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a really easy way to do it. Yeah, we'll get we'll get through that too, and just yeah, just load a bunch of presets. So you can do preset shredding while you make a mud pie. So that's why I think I'm like I'm kind of shifting towards using this loop menu term, right? And uh, the reason why I call it a loop menu is because you have one loop that's recorded, and then you have a ton of different variations on that loop that you've either generated by recording it looping while you're doing sound design, or by doing something more akin to a mud pie where you're just piling on the plugins and trying to make it really chaotic right depends on how much chaos you particularly you know crave at that moment right so uh but the idea with a loop menu is that you have a repetitive part that is all lined up to the bars and then you can do this technique that's called slip editing where you basically have a, a, a sample where it, it's either in the arrange view or it's a MIDI note coming into a sampler where you know that that's going to be in that spot in the arrangement. And then you move the playhead within the sample mm. to select where in the sample plays during that piece of, of time in the song. Right. So that technique is called slip editing. And when, so I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to make two different kinds of um, mud pies. I'll show you the, 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 the classic mud pie, which is just like, you know, uh, when you load up a synth and just try and get a whole bunch of wild and wacky noises out of it. And then from there, I'll show you an effects based mud pie, which is where you take either a loop or a sample that you've made um, and you pile on the effects and make it all glitchy, you know, so that could be like a glitch mud pie or an effect mud pie. And then I'll, uh, I'll show you how to take a, a loop We'll load a loop in a synth. We'll do some preset shredding to generate a loop menu. And then we'll do a uh, glitch mud pie on the loop menu. So that's, uh, that's where we're going. Uh, all right. So does anyone have any questions about the theory behind mud pies? What a mud pie is, uh, subtypes of mud pies, etc. Cause I mean, these terms I'm kind of like, I'm, 
you know, mud pie and loop menu. I've just made these terms up this year, but I think they really like the loop menu implies slip editing mm -hmm. and mud pie, I think implies the, the sound chaos. design process of just making as much chaos as possible. Yeah. So um, a mud pie, oh, the question is what's a mud pie? Okay, so I'll explain <laughs> it again. Um, all right, so a mud pie, at least when I was a child, was when you would go uh when you would go in and you you'd take a bunch of dirt and you'd make a pie and you'd be like this is food and it was really messy usually you got covered in dirt you would eat dirt when you made them and they were just like <laughs> playful pies of mud right so people would call those mud pies i think they still do i don't know maybe it was just a canadian thing but uh At first um, I thought it was like a cow I, I was thinking of cow pie, like a, like a, a coucher. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. So it's, it's just <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's a pie made of mud, basically <laughs> is what it is. So um, then uh, basically this technique is where you're just trying to make a bunch of crazy fucking sound to sample that's like usually around a two minute long recording uh, I find the most practical length for them is about two minutes sometimes a bit more especially if it's late at night um, but a two minute long recording of lots of sonic possibilities uh, generally speaking the more chaotic the better and then you would take that and you would um, you would then resample it later okay so this is this is this can be seen in the synth sampling recipe and uh the the preset shredding aka the loop voicing recipe uh which are in the edm cookbook in the dojo if you want more information on that in the dojo um there's also another weekly download uh called advanced audio editing with drum racks that, one's great. that is about drum racks and mud pies but a lot of people um have been asking for a weekly download just about mud pies because and i think I think it warrants it. It's a really fundamental technique. So this one is just about mud pies. Um, and okay, so then Nathan asks, is the idea to pile on the effects so that you can save CPU uh, when you have made the audio? Uh, yeah, the idea is, is, is to basically use tons of effects that are like your fanciest effects that would maybe overwhelm your CPU uh, if you were using them with such wild abandon throughout the rest <laughs> of your project. So yeah, it saves CPU, but it also is more practical like even if it didn't save cpu even if i had an unlimited cpu i would still totally do this mud pie technique mm -hmm. okay because it's it's useful it's the best yeah, way to happy little accidents. yeah happy what accidents it's what comes. You'll, you'll, like sounds you don't even think are musical at any at any point in anything like you'll be making them and you're just like how would i make a fucking song with this and then literally like you start to chop them up into these little like half a bar or one bar loops and then you can start throwing them on a drum rack and just just watching him do timer beats with mud pies is yeah like yeah watch like, some of my timer beats in the yeah. in the edm cookbook i'm up to like 83 timer beats now this year fucking banging them out um okay so i'm gonna screen share uh and let's go to screen sharing and then i'm gonna screen share yeah uh, i'll eject i'll eject your usb now as well yeah oh man do we have a track on the go Ooh, yeah it's a good one yeah man these collab visits uh they they, they work out well man yeah uh just about it's just i'm just hitting the eject there and then i gotta change my sound card in ableton to l weekly download sound card which is the zoom audio device yeah this this track is a heater um yeah here i'll i'll play you some of it just real quick Woo! All right. Um, anyway, yeah, you should be clear to pull your USB now. Oh, oh no! Oh no! You broke everything. <laughs> All right. So here we're making a new uh, new project here, and uh, I'm gonna do it with like I, I often use my hardware synths because I love them, but um, they're not um, viewable from your screen. So I'm just gonna do. 
Uh, I'm just going to do a soft synth mud pie here. Um, okay, so we're going to use uh, Serum. Serum is a great synth. Uh, a lot of you I know will have it. Uh, for those of you that do not perhaps own any soft synths, I would say Serum would be a great place to start. You can rent it on Splice. They have a rent to own program. It's like 20 bucks to start, I think. So it's really not that, it's not that expensive. Okay, so now one concern that um, I just wanna start off with when we're making the MIDI here is uh, you gotta keep in mind if you're sampling this, if you play, like sometimes you wanna have a ton of different notes, right? But a lot of the time it's nice to just have one note that's like your lowest note that you're gonna realistically use, right? And uh, I often will sample it at F and then I keep everything kind of the same note. Okay, so I'm gonna make a nice low F here and make it, I guess, four bars long and hit that legato button. So now we have maybe a little, maybe one lower. Yeah, see that's, we're gonna go, this low C. Yeah, let's do this. And then everything will t t stay tuned later. So I'll do this low C, but you want to do something that's like as low as you're going to use, right? And then if you keep it that same note, then when you're sampling it later, pitching things up is not too bad, you know, because you, you're making the audio compressed. It typically will create less artifacts. Um, whereas if you're pitching something that's really high pitched and you try and make it into a bass, a lot of the time it sounds shitty and you can hear like the, you can hear the audio quality start to come come apart from shifting it down as opposed to up. So um, I'm going to sample this nice low note and I'm just going to keep this low note playing. I might do some pitch bends. I might do some LFOs and stuff, but I'm going to keep it kind of centrally around this low C pitch. Okay. So now uh, I'm going to start by calling this hashtag mud pie. Um, the hashtag means that it will retain the track number in Ableton. I'm not sure if it's like that in other DAWs. Uh, I'm also going to go save as and put this in the weekly download um, so that uh, if it crashes, which it very likely may, um, if it crashes, that we'll have a backup. Uh, one of the great things about Mud Pies is even if it crashes, you're going to still have your um, audio that you've recorded. So it's, it also protects you against crashing. So yeah, very good, great technique for a number of reasons. Okay, so now I'm going to start this just with this saw wave. And uh, actually, maybe I'll make it shorter. Than, I'll make it a bar. I can always make it longer later. I'll make it a bar just because I might want to do some envelope stuff to it. Having a single trusted source when you're learning music production is ideal, but schools cost tens of thousands. And people often leave without finishing tracks. The weekly download is that single trusted source. I challenge anyone to try the arrangement exercise or timer beats without getting over their writer's block. Wednesday nights at 7. Um, okay, so now I've got this mud pie set up and I'm just going to hit record here um, and I'm going to start grabbing knobs and uh, actually, you know what I'll do? I'll do this because maybe I want some of that automation to record later. That could be cool too. Okay, so just make that a bar log though for now. Okay, so now I'm just going to start recording and mess this sound up a lot and have a bit of fun and then we're going to take this this synth mud pie that's just going to be synth tones and we're going to mess it up with some glitch effects too boy oh, yeah. actually let's do one i never work at 120 so i'll do 140. Forgot to set my input, whoops. Gotta go input from Serum. Oh, that was dumb. All right, here we go.
All right, so you get the picture. It starts off all fairly innocent, and then usually by the time you get about halfway through, it gets pretty crazy. So then often you like you'll notice that there's like there's some some pretty wild volume fluctuations going on here. Um, some people like to compress them and edit them a little bit when they're going from this stage to the next, uh, but it really depends on your style. Um, but yeah, I think it's uh, that a lot of stuff just happened. So let's just, uh, let's open it up to questions. If see if anybody has any questions, uh, here, I'm trying to figure out, I think I have to stop screen sharing to get the chat out. Okay, cool. So does anyone have any questions about any of that serum stuff that just happened? Um, because basically like what I did was I started by getting an oscillator just at the, the right pitch. Uh, and then I went and loaded a bunch of different effects and then started changing some oscillator and filter parameters on the synth and routing LFOs to control many different oscillator and synth parameters, right? And then from there, I went into the modulation matrix inside the, the, the synth where all of the LFOs that are controlling all of the effects and everything are happening. And I just started wildly playing with their values. I, I wasn't even really like, I wasn't even thinking like, oh, I know that one's connected to that, so I should adjust it by this much. I was literally just grabbing shit and cramming the values like wherever to make it as chaotic as possible, right? So there's a lot of LFO to the pitch uh, about halfway through. Uh, I started doing that a lot. There's a lot of LFO to filter parameters, effect parameters, but you can do that in pretty much any, any synth. And I'll show you a little bit about how to do that sort of thing with effects that are not inside of Serum. The reason why you serum was because it's a really um a a lot of you have serum and b um serum is um you know it's really there's a lot of effects in there that you can just get at with the lfos so they're they're good um i would suggest tweaking pretty much everything but pitch uh filter wavetable um lfo speed i had one lfo modulating the yellow other lfo to ch change the speed up a lot um but yeah pretty much just just you know tons of stuff you know uh and then yeah so yeah good times uh what was my logic between creating that long midi car of clip bar uh, bar notes if i just loop the one bar anyways um i was debating maybe doing another one where i record all of the automation because all of that automation can be recorded into ableton if you like but i, I didn't want to complicate the process for you so I, I just thought better of it and then looped this, the first bar um how often do you make custom wavetables from clips and mud pies by uploading a sample of the wavetable i would say never um and what settings do you use there's just just google how to make wavetables there's a bunch of different tutorials i would say au5 serum tutorials are my favorite so if you're watching serum tutorials check out au5 um and then yeah i was recording that the whole time so i'll go back to screen sharing so now i'm going to show you some of the stuff that can be done with cutting up a mud pie and i guess we'll make a preset shred with the um with the mud pie here uh, i'll make a loop menu with it so let's take this mud pie now and then I'm going to just pop it into a simpler. And this is amazing. Check this out. If you just go to slice and you go to a slice by regions and then you crank it up to like 64 regions, which is the maximum, I believe. Here, I'll turn the camera down. So now you can see basically as I crank this up and down, you can see it populating the slices onto my push. How sick is that? super easy but you can do that in a lot of different samplers or machine or whatever and now if i put this over on gate right now here i'll mute that mute that take this that now so you can see how the volume thing is a bit of a problem now I don't want them all to be the same volume when you're chopping them up. So what a lot of people like to do is get everybody's favorite compressor, OTT, and crank it. And then... Some people who are wild will even do triple OTT like maniacs. It's gonna have no variation in volume left at all, or variation of frequencies. It's loud and crazy the whole time now.
So um, now I'm going to uh, freeze and flatten. Actually, here, let's um, put the mud pie over here. And I'll freeze and flatten. There we go, it's freezing. And I'm gonna flatten it, and then um, at that point, you'll see that the chops come out a little nicer sounding. Do 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 freezing and flattening. Hey, hey, hey. All right. Flatten that. Okay. And now we have a mud pie that has been OTT'd, so it's gonna be much more consistent. Not completely squashed, but much more consistent. Now if I bring that in there, and I go to slice bar region, put it on gate mode, crank the regions up. Look at it going on the push. Oh, 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 pretty cool. Now. And you can like, you can zoom in on the simpler. The simpler has its nice ability to pop things up. So let's say I like, let's say I like that one, but I wish it was just over a little. I can just drag it over. That one just kind of sucks. Yeah, so now let's make a riff. I'm gonna have to not use my hands. Normally I would use my hands for this, um, but the latency is such that it's, it's not really gonna work. Oh yeah, let's also put the volume up to there. And then I'm gonna put a quick limiter on here uh, so that um, it does not get too crazy. Okay, there we go. So now I'm gonna make a quick little. Duplicate it.
if that one's cool, but maybe they can get the root notes. make another pattern that's like same same rhythm but these two alternate so I'll do that by just quit programming some quick follow actions and then we're gonna um, do some shredding so every four bars it's gonna change to the next one so then these will trade off right killer refs all right so here there's some uh, questions asked here um, god I really wish it was easier for me to get the chat from here. Um, okay, there we go. Um, okay, so here, where we are. Um, I've heard the new live grade has waiting music for when it's freezing. No, it does not. Dylan, when do you do mud pies? Does keeping track of key of the original matter? Well, kind of. You can always check after by using like a tuner or by using the spectrum. Uh, and then you mouse over the the peaks of the fundamental in the in the spectrum, and it'll tell you what note it is. Um, but yeah, so if it's recorded as C, it's the same one. Um, and then yeah, so I'm on session view right now, but I've just made this quick little looping pattern here, right? So now I'm going to show you how to make an effect based kind of glitchy mud pie. So I'm going to tell this channel to record from this, uh, and I'm going to basically just preset shred with a bunch of effects and make a further level of mud pie. Okay, here we go down the rabbit hole.
So anyway, you get the picture there. Um, now we have, what is that? It's like a couple minutes, like uh, crazy, crazy noises. So now these ones have been, this is like a mud pie where I basically made a loop menu where this is like a ton of different versions of this loop. So then let's say I got a beat here. Um, let's see, beat 140, what do I have for 140? Do that. Let's get a drum bus on it. Get it nice and loud. Okay, now um, I'm gonna go take a OTT again. Yeah, this kind of craziness, you really should just be, you know, making things really loud if that's what you're after. So I'm just, I'm putting OTT on everything. I don't give a fuck right now. Uh, all right, so now I'm gonna put another limiter. Um, might as well do Fab Filter Pro L. Um, let's do the output at a nice little minus 12 there, so that it's six below our kick and snare, which are at minus six. That's close enough. Yes, now if I were to, I mean, this beat doesn't really have a lot of, it's not that great a beat. I mean, it sounds cool, but it needs, it's designed to have a louder kick and snare under it. Um, but uh, let's say this was our hypothetical beat, right? Then you could make a, a um, composition by doing something like this. So actually here, I'll just go. I get some, get some snares in here. Um, we're gonna make sure I'm not giving away anyone else's snares or my Gail Gates snares. There we go. on them. Close enough, it's gonna have to do. Um, okay, so now let's make a composition with our mud pie. With our loop recipe here. Okay, 
case. Now check it out. I'll show you the, 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 this is the slip editing. So now I want to change just this sound. So it's now we've got. I guess I boom, freak, and then whatever that is. So now uh, I'm going to make a short loop here. That is a one bar loop. And as long as you have a one bar loop, you can literally watch this. This is fucking magic. You can drag the position and you get the same note in the sequence just with a different set of parameters. Okay? So I'm gonna go one, two, or here, one, two. And that works anywhere. Like if I, let's say I want a different part of the sequence, I'll go over to here. Let's say I want, uh, so I want that part. Then if I drag the bar number, I get, that, I get that part every time. It's such a good technique. See, it gets you the same part of the bar every time when you move it around. So I want a different one of these. The loop's on. Uh, loop's gonna be one bar long, and then. So useful. Just make that a bar, and then move the loop. Take this one, let's do the loop menu, make it into one bar. And then you can make your patterns. Now let's say I want a different one here. Let's find one that's more of like a grindy kind of thing. Let's go, oops, undo that. Let's go later, way later. And you can really get a nice sequence that this, if you were adam automating this stuff, forget about it. it. Takes so long. Let's see what else we got that's like this. Say I want a half time this. And let's do play forward in stop mode, put it on beats, transient sixteenths.
disgusting, disgusting. And it already sounds like a song, right? So that's mud pies. That's how you make mud pies. That's some of the typical ways you'd use them. Um, there's another weekly download that's all about mud pies and drum racks because I find myself often using drum racks to slip edit, but I know a lot of you out there are big fans of audio editing and I didn't want you to think the drum, uh, that mud pies are only a drum rack thing. But if you want more on the drum rack use of mud pies, um, definitely go check out uh, definitely go check out the weekly download uh, called Advanced Audio Editing with Drum Racks. Uh, and that is in here. That's a, a really good one. Um, so let's see. Advanced. Oops. Spelt like a silly person. Uh, advanced Editing with Drum Pads. So weekly download number 103. That is, uh, that is the one that is about um, using them inside of drum racks. Also, be sure to check out the drum rack workshop. If you're in the dojo, I've told you, I get people again and again and again, the drum rack workshop is the shit. Definitely check out the drum rack workshop. Um, that is drum rack workshop. Uh, that is, what is that weekly download? Number four. That's very, it's that important. It was number four. So weekly download 104 or number four is the drum rack workshop. Um, there's also, uh, if you want some mud pies, like maybe you don't want to make your own mud pies. Although I can't imagine why you saw how easy and fun it is to make mud pies. It, it works every time. Um, but the modular sounds in uh, weekly download number, uh, what, down, what weekly download it's at. Uh, is we could download seven it has some modular sounds so you can see this has been like a major part of what i teach for a long time it's just never got its own weekly download um but yeah so the modular sounds are in there and a lot of my sound packs you'll see have modular sounds um also if you are in the uh member vault if you are or if you are like if you own the studio template or if you are a full-fledged dojo member um the 2019 studio template has some mud pies in it the 2018 sample library has a good deal of mud pies in it so be on the lookout for them they're in my sample packs everywhere i should probably make a mud pies folder that's top level in there but anyway there's mud pies mud pies to be found in the dojo but the technique is best used when you do it yourself so um check out um check out those ones uh there's also i do some in the neuro base uh one there's actually a couple neuro bass um, and neuro bases are just like heavily affected ones. Yeah. Weekly download 69 is all about making neuro bases. So check out weekly download number 69 too. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot in there. And if you check out sound design drums at 128, if you scroll through this in the weekly download, there's tons of stuff. Uh, I probably do some of it in making sounds out of anything. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of those early crash course in audio editing. I'd probably do a little bit of mod pie making uh, granular synthesis is a fun one. Uh, but yeah, so just, um, you know, go in there, check them out. Uh, definitely check out the advanced audio editing with drum racks is number one of three. Definitely check out number seven because it has a bunch of mud pies and you can watch me making a bunch of hardware mud pies. Um, okay. So let's check out some questions. Can you show how to loop and scroll again quickly? Yeah, sure. Um, so all you got to do is take a chop. Um, so I'll do it with this drum loop. I'll bring it up. So here's this drum loop. Let's say that this drum loop had a bunch of different snares in it and I'm not sure which snare I want, right? So what I'll do is I'll highlight just the snare like this and then I'll make a one bar loop, 1.0. Zero, one, zero, zero. And now when I take the position of this loop and I move it, you can see that I still have the same length of time in the loop here, but it always lands on the snare. Anytime I move the bar number in that number field, it always lands on the snare. Also because the way Ableton snapping operates, you can just grab the loop and move it like that. But as long as you have a nice little one bar loop here, um, you know, that, and you can also just, you could also just select, like you could select a one bar loop like that. If you went like snare to snare, went loop like that, then you can move this around and, and do it. But I find, I find just typing 1.0.0 is easiest. 
Uh, and then you, as long as you can move this anywhere you want and you will always land on the same spot every bar. It's called slip editing. Okay, cool. Um, all right, cool. So any questions? Uh, any questions about any of this? Okay. Um, Uh, there's a question about clipping. Yeah, you you know, sometimes you wreck parts of the mud pie from clipping it, whatever. There'll be cool parts too. Just don't blow it out too hard. Uh, but, you know, for this particular sound design style I'm looking for, which is just like really sonically aggressive, like glitch sounds, putting tons of OTT on it works. But if you're concerned about that, don't put OTT and don't put limiters. And, you know, you'll just clip it in some spots and whatever. It's not really a big deal. Um, but, yeah, limiting it too hard, compressing it too hard can make things sound all boxy and shitty. But, you know, a lot of that shit, it's like, you know, when you look at these these videos about mixing, they're going to be like, don't do this, don't do that. And you got to keep in mind, they're talking about mixing. Okay. When it comes to mixing, yeah, be really careful about compression. When it comes to mixing, be really careful about your EQing. Right. But when it comes to sound design, anything fucking goes. Okay. And a lot of the time using plugins in ways they are not designed to be used and like really just like no fucks given, just destroying your sound is what it takes to make it sound cool. Okay. So don't, like making mud pies is not the time to be following the fucking rules. That is the last time to be following the rules. Forget everything you've learned about music production and just go crazy on everything. Okay. That's the point of a mud pie. Break all the goddamn rules. Make, make the craziest sounds you can, because if you are timid, it defeats the entire purpose of making mud pies. Okay. So very important to recommend. Um, this is like a 128 on steroids cracking opium. Yeah. That's uh, quite the comment like that, uh, Nick, but yeah, I guess it kind of is. It kind of is. Um, uh, just had a religious experience, dude. Wow. You got, okay. This one was a hit. All right, cool. I'm glad, Virgin Mary, man. I'm glad you, uh, I'm glad you like it. Um, cool. Could you go over, you use this simpler again to make each little section of pad on your controller. Check that out in weekly download one of four. There's a whole weekly download about that, Jesse, cause we're, we're, it's already gone a long time. And if I start making drum racks, I'll, I'll, I'll go crazy and we'll be here doing sound design all day. Um, did I start the mud pie at C zero? Yeah, I did. That was realistically lower than I was ever going to play on the keyboard. Like that's probably the lowest note. I, I normally don't go lower than like F or E Cthulhu is in D. Sometimes I go to D if I like really mean it, but um, I did that low C cause it's just lower than I'll ever go. And when you sample C it's nice because then when you put it in the sampler, like let's say you're using scales mode on the push or you're playing on the piano, all the notes stay the same because you sample to C. it doesn't, the tuning doesn't deviate. So C's are good for sampling. Some other people like to sample an F, but then you gotta be like correcting all the time for the deviation of F to C. Um, do you do this technique for melodies instead of just looping uh, or is it just usually single notes? You can, but then as soon as you make a loop where it's more than one note, you're now in the loop voicing recipe and you're no longer just like making mud pies. Mud pies are kind of just one note usually. Um, yeah, all the, uh, so all the mud pies are going to essentially be the same note to change the pitch. Yeah, usually, usually. But, you know, like I said, break all the rules. Break all the rules all the time. I just want to show you the power of the technique. You can adapt it any way you want. Break all the rules. Um, what was the thing about the hashtag naming you mentioned at the beginning? Um, oh, these are, it's not so much hashtags. It's just um, the, the mud pies and loop menus. That's kind of like those are new terms for old techniques. I feel they explain the techniques better than the terms I've heard other people using. So I eventually, I just got fed up and just started making my own term. I don't normally make my own term unless I have to, but I feel like uh, loop menus, mud pies, mud pies and loop menus, I think are, it really cuts to the, cuts to the core of what those techniques do and how they fit into the workflow. So I'm just like, I'm moving forward with it. Um, Mr. Bill's moving forward with it. Like a bunch of, um, hopefully other, other educators will adopt it, but you heard it here first. They're called mud pies now and they're called loop menus now. Um, do you have any favorite mud pie chain effects for future mud pies? I mean, guitar rig is great because it has mo anything that has multiple effects 
together. Like you could swap Ableton racks, you could swap guitar rig presets. Um, Serum is great Echo because it's so great. easy to automate things. Yeah, Echo is great. The sound toy stuff is really yeah. good for making mud pies. Um, yeah, and then check out like Fracture and all those. Just look up free glitch oh. plugins on KVRVST and get those. Yeah, Max for Live is great for making mud pies. Um, yes, make illegal mud pies. Yes, definitely. Illegal samples too. If you mud pie an illegal sample, you're, it's not going to be recognizable anymore. And then, hey, no one, no one cares if it's a legal sample anymore. Um, cool. Yeah, Manipulator, very big on mud pies. The Max for Live LFO is very big on mud pies. But check out check out the other one on mud pies that's uh, about mud pies and drum racks. Because that one, uh, 104, I go into a bit more detail on some other mud pie making techniques. Isotope Trash. Yeah, Distortion plugins are very good for mud pies. Um, okay, cool. Any other mud pie related questions from anyone? I'm here for you. I'm here. I'm ready to answer your questions. Oh, Lexi says, do you save and use effect racks that you've used for past mud pies? Um, I'm usually after something kind of different with each mud pie. So I like to do them like really chaotically. I find the more chaotically you can approach it, the better. So I don't typically save mud pie presets, but I might start. I don't know. I don't think I have anything. I don't think I have anything against saving mud pie resets. Print the sub in, yeah, yeah. I often print the sub in because the sub, especially when you're using saturation and stuff, the sub sometimes will make the saturators sound richer. Um, sometimes too, I'll mud pie everything but the sub, and I'll have the sub stay um, like in, a, in a, um, a rack where I'll, I'll split off the top frequencies, and then the sub stays unmolested so that it's like nice and clean, um, and then. Do you save them in your library or treat them as song specific? Um, I actually, yeah, here, I'll show you. I have a whole folder of mud pies. I'll go back to sharing. I have a whole folder of mud pies. It's pretty fun. So in this folder, um, if I go into my user library and I go into my clips, here's a bunch of my, my faves. some modular sound this one's just clipping the shit so hard like clipping clip like look at this waveform you can't even see the waveform it's clipped so hard oh pro tip if you want to be able to skip around in the samples go to um, auto warp and turn your auto warp thing on like that. Now watch. Oh, Excuse me. Yeah, there's, there's lots of these. Um, but yeah, make make lots of mud pies. Have fun. Make lots of mud pies. Put them in your music. Make your shit more chaotic. It'll be oh, fun. Yeah. It'll be fun. Um, and yeah, then as long as you sequence it with intention, it'll come across as intentional. Do you ever do MIDI recording for mud pies? Yeah, sometimes I'll make MIDI mud pies where I'll use like um, a random note generator. Uh, there's an old school technique called a Turing machine, T-U-R-I-N-G machine. I think it might have been invented by Alan Turing. I'm not sure. He was pretty cool. Um, but the Turing machine basically generates a random sequence of notes, and then you can sample that sequence by usually turning a knob on the synthesizer unit, and it will like record a looping sequence of pitch. So some people do that. Flume, for example, um, basically shared that a lot of the time when he comes up with his melodies, he'll um, have like a random MIDI note generator and just leave the random going for like five or ten minutes, and then go in and edit the best pieces of MIDI which is essentially like a midi mud pie. Um, Damien asked, do you do these as evening sessions? Usually, yeah. And then sometimes start tracks with them. Yeah, I start tracks with them all the time. Watch a lot of my recent timer beats and I'll, st I'll, I'll make a mud pie the night before and then wake up the next day and make a beat with it. I totally 
was making a mud pie the other day and I wrote that sidetracked song totally like I mean it was I was like making the mud pie and just fucking around and just like everything hit me from that sound like just the like wobbly sounds I got it just I wrote a song from it. I couldn't put it down I woke up the next day and just like got on it I like figured out the lyrics and the vocals and everything hopped on the microphone I mean it was just it wrote itself from a mud pie like so yeah there it's, you have it yeah there you have it. Um, all right, cool. Any other any other questions before we wrap it up here? Um, oh yeah. Also, I think um, just a second. I'm gonna go over to Slack here. But I think um, I'm through. Uh, basically, next month I'm through all the dojo visits that are booked. So um, there are more dojo visit spots available. So I'm just going to get the link for that. Um, there are more dojo visit spots. So if you want to come and produce, I mean, I mean I was, was it worth it or what? Dude, worth every fucking, like every little bit of energy and saying everything. I would highly recommend it. I mean, you're gonna not sleep probably, but <laughs> yeah, you don't come here. You don't come here to sleep. Okay. Yeah, you definitely. If you're coming here to do anything but fucking work on tunes for like 14 hours a day, then don't come here. <laughs> okay, cool. So yeah, there it is. There's a. It's join.producerdojo.com/slash/dojo-visit. Um, but there are spots available. Um, he chose the collab. So the collab visits, like the two most popular ones are the collab visit, which is like three, sometimes four days and the training week, which is five days. Okay. Those are the two most popular options. Um, and the collab one, you want to bring lots of mud pies, lots of faces, lots of purple cows. Wow. We'll get a way better track out of it because um, there's been a couple where people have come and they have not been prepared at all and have basically been like, Hey, let's make a track. These are some artists that I like. And it's basically turns into me like copying their musical influences and it's not fun for me and I'm not into it. So, uh, if you want to do that, don't book a visit cause yeah. I don't want to do that. Okay. Um, Bring your own so program. yeah. And then it's, um, it, it, this is not a free of charge thing. This takes a lot of my time. I'm de I'm dedicating like many days of my time to you specifically one-on-one. -on -one, so this is not included in the 808 membership. Um, if you want to stop by and say hi though, if you're in LA, that's no problem. A lot of it. And a lot of, I mean, you've seen, there's been like yeah. tons, tons of dojo members just yeah, come dude, in and out of the great. dojo. That's fine. But if you know, we're doing a collab or, and that you're going to get your name on it. And I mean, a couple of, a couple of the collabs have been like, I just shot a music video for the, one of the collabs with spider hound. Uh, and then that one's getting on the world of dance thing. Uh, we just shot a music video for it and it's going to be on the world of dance. And then my collab with galactic groove, Lauren wants it for amorphous and he wants the spider hound one for amorphous. So, you know, you can get like, you know, if the, the, if the tracks come out sick, I'm going to put them out. I got to they might KJ. not even. Yeah. We did a collab like, with KJ. KJ was dude, a surprise guest. Like huge man. Like I'm from, washington and we fucking love kj <laughs> not that we don't love dylan but it's like he's a seattle yeah dude, he's like, like a was crazy. he's a legend yeah, up there dude. so um so yeah it's definitely like it's pretty cool so the collab visit is cool uh and then the training week is cool either way i can load up your hard drive and uh yeah we'll rock but yeah so there's some new spots open um and you know, so far, 100% satisfaction rates with everyone who's attended. Uh, I think it's definitely worth it. I would have loved to do it when I was coming up. So, yeah, so there's spots. Uh, the pricing is in the link. Join.producedojo.com slash dojo dash visit. Uh, I think it's worth way more than what I'm charging. Oh, yeah. but way, 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 way. You know, way that's over prom yeah. uh, under promise, over deliver. That's yeah. how you do it. Um, jump on it. I highly recommend it. Anybody that's got the money, fucking sell shit, whatever, like jump on it. I use my school loan money from college i like i got the loan check and <laughs> all right so no, no regrets no regrets uh all right cool so lots of love everybody big shouts out to dave and spider hound and matter and you know trap jesus and, and all, all the all the senseis everyone involved in the dojo uh, uh jesse zodiac killer has been really stepping up a lot lately what up shaky what up lexi um yeah, nick nat everybody J jesse T and robin thank you all for watching uh trisha love you um and uh yeah we are out that's the weekly download for this week peace, peace.